Microphone check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You already know yo, the Gemini yo, Scorpio podcast yo, is here. Yo, yo. Mr. J here, I'm here. Shade's here. Hilla Bay building. here. How Episode 24. Monique is in the building. Hello. Alex is here. Yes, sir. Family is here. Wyman is here behind Missing the cameras. Jewel, Jewel, Jewel is here in spirit. In spirit. There we go. Episode 24. How was everybody week? Let's let's run through this. My week was great. I read a lot of books this week. You know what I'm okay. saying? Okay. Yeah, you got into that 50 Cent book. That's what you're telling me to read. I'm going to get into it. Everybody needs to read that book. But he ain't paying me yet, so. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> it's, a book, it's a book, though. We, I mean, it's a book. We can, if it's a good book, it's a good book. That's right. We got to share this knowledge. We, we, we can do that. Uh, hustle smarter. Hustle. No, hustle harder. Hustle smarter. You check. You checked out The Go-Giver, too? Yeah, absolutely. That book. One of my favorites. I, I read it in a day. I yeah, couldn't I told put you. it down. I couldn't put it down. I told you. It's, Sorry, it's, stop it. Hands. You said what? I said I couldn't stop it. No, it was hands down one of, one of the good ones. How was your day? How was your day? I mean, your week and, yeah. Um... My week was good. I started off with church on Sunday last week. Um, I got outside a couple times this week, which was really good for someone like me because I need sun, I need air, and I need to breathe. So I went on a hike. The whole fam did a hike to Great Falls in Virginia. If you haven't been, got to sit by some water and, you know, do the whole shebang. So it was cool. Stay organized. Um, Went to see my mom. Um, it helped her with some things. So the week was good. The yeah, week was my good. week was all right. We did go uh, hiking, and it was more people there than I expected. It was the club. Like, I ain't going to lie, though, but I seen pictures of, I don't know if these old pictures, but D.C. No, was, was lit up. They, were, they like, wasn't old because I seen people tweeting about, yo, D.C. right now is wild. Yeah, so, like, maybe it was just something in the air that day because we had to get out of the house, and so did everybody else. So like, Well, we didn't go that day, though. It was way more people yesterday. We went on a chillier day, which was 63. Yesterday, no, was I'm saying when we went out, when we went to the park, I'm saying like, oh, the park, the park, yeah, yeah no. it was just, it was telling people, and we try to go out. early because you know, I was like, let's get out here early before people start getting the idea. Man, look, we walked in, people was walking out like yeah, club was, lit, so it was cool though. Like you know, we had our mask on and we still practice some form of social distancing. Um, but you know, to me, nature cures all. So I don't care where I'm at. If I'm outside, I'm Gucci. Yeah, Mother man. Mother nature told me so. Shout out to the Bel-Air family. We drinking a McQueen today. Uh, we forgot Let to get the shipment. So let's. my motherfucking chase in here because Jaden. Just drink, not just drink it after. Because you're going to make a mess. Okay. Still made a mess. But right. I can't drink that straight. I'm so sorry. Let me not get your phone. Y'all can't see the table, so fuck y'all. Straight like that. All right. Well, I take some. I was just take it to take it at a sh- shot at a time. Mm-mm, that shit is too strong. Mm. Mm. Teach you the trick, man. Thanks, Monique. You- yeah, thanks. This actually tastes great as a drink. Yeah. Uh, Jen, this is Jen. Thank you, Mel. Shout out to Monique with the vibes. There we go. Back to normal, like it never happened. Period. Okay. Mm. Can can I get that extra one? Oh, you are amazing. Yeah, you got to hold you. it, though. You got to just take a sip, no, 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 hold no, no. it, and then that, drink it. That's given. Mm, okay. Well, yeah, shout out to the Bel-Air family, the McQueen. We drinking. Uh, yeah, it's gin. It's pretty decent. You know what I'm saying? Just. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. It tastes great with that drink, though. You know, here, taste mine together. Come on, just taste it. It's good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tastes pretty decent. Let me. About to get litty. All right, so we talking about um and juicy, juicy. Say, mm, that's all good. Uh, I was <laughs> thinking. So um, last episode we was talking about episode. Jay keep acting all serious. Uh uh-uh, uh, loosen up. I keep trying to giggle. You keep mm-hmm. anyway. So she said, I'm trying to have some fun. Come on, uh, it's beautiful out. Well, it's a little gloomy today, but it's still beautiful out. The weather breaking. I know we on quarantine, but let's get lit. Yeah, it's lit. I mean, it's episode twenty four. It's a celebration. So why you? I, I ain't never seen somebody say celebration with a straight face. It's a celebration. I mean, I feel like we, like we. Me? I'm like, it's a celebration. Jay's like, it's a celebration. I feel like we start the show all the time the same thing. You're it's saying what's ce- going on, everybody? Then a, we go straight Jay, in. Jay, let's Jay, get the pot in. It's it's a celebration. Yeah, it's a ce- it's, yeah, it's a celebration. What the pastor said when we watched church today, because although we are drinking hookah and smoking and doing that, we definitely watched church today. We went to church today, and the pastor was like, you know, some people just be straight face all the time. Retirement, wedding. Mm-hmm. Funerals, <laughs> celebration, 
Yo, shout Not out. BJ. Actually, shout out to uh, Keith Battle. I actually DM'd him because he was he's, he's a pretty dope pastor. Love Keith Battle. Yeah, he's Love definitely, definitely Keith dope. Battle. So shout like, out to the church. Let's get to um, unpacking again. Black as fuck. So we we unpacked episode four last week, and we were talking about um, the the what's the exact word. Adultification? Nah, nah. That's oh, we you talking, talking about, about last week. Yeah, last week we was just talking um, about the, um, not stereotypes. Oh, I always get these two words. Just, we just gonna double call standard. it mom. Double standard. Yeah, yeah, mom versus dads. Yeah, we were talking about the double versus st- men. Femininity versus masculinity. The same old, you know, things we all battle on a daily. Yeah, we were talking about yeah. just um the the uh the double standards of parenting. Dad, yeah, parenting, right? So right. this week wanted to actually unpack black as fuck again. So on this Dope topics, man. Yeah. So on episode three of uh black as fuck they was talking about adultification and can we pull up the definition monique real quick of adultification oh so we can uh just read it to the audience one time so he's talking about adultification and i thought it was dope because the dialogue that the i don't know the daughter name the black daughter well the dark skin do- oh, shit wow what the fuck? <laughs> well they have multiple daughters i mean no, they like they so the brown skin daughter, daughter yeah the brown skin one. The, the one that's doing the narrating of the show. She's yeah. narrating most of the show. Sorry, don't quite remember her name. You're dope, though. I love you. Yeah, so when she um, when she broke the adultification down, I thought it was dope. And I'm like, yo, we got to talk about this. Um, So let's, let me play the, well, let me read the adultification. And then I'm going to play the clip for everybody to hear. So it is, uh, let's just say adultification, childhood adultification. Oh, is it is it is, is on there? Is it a Google Doc? All right, bet. Let's read. Let's read it from the Google Doc. Shout out to Alice for putting everything together for us. All right, so oh, the link. Click the link. You should be able to click it, right? Oh man. What this? is a blue dot? Oh, okay. Never mind. Now I gotta play the what's the name? What? Scroll up, Monique. What is that coming down like right above? You got it. We having some screen issues, y'all. We apologize. But basically, yeah. So, um, she was just saying how black black girls are looked at as older than what they actually are, and she was going from there. She was just saying that like we play a a role in it, and we gotta stop. We gotta stop doing things to play to that role of adultification and having people look at us or look at these young ladies as older than what they are. And we actually pulling up the definition now. Of course, Alex put, put up a whole um, article because that's what Alex li- does. Just like a summary, something to simplify it of, you know, what it could be looked at. Um, so something I've seen before, how they'll have, you know, uh, Caucasian little girls or Hispanic little girls and their hair will be long, it'll be out. And it's like, oh, they're so cute. But if a black girl has long hair, curls, and her hair's out, is she's too grown. So that's just a simplified way to just kind of look at it in perspective. Um, something I think we all deal with, like hairstyles, and it, it could be a range of things, clothing and things like this. Once a black little girl puts it on, she's grown, or you're looking at her in a grown manner. So. All right, so we're going to read the definition. The de- definition says uh, adultification is a social or cultural stereotype that is based on how adults perceive children in the absence of knowledge of children's behavior and verbalizations. And from that, they argue that their participants participation of black girls as being less innocent and in need of less nutrients, guidance and protection are similar are similar to the dehumanization stereotypes of black women. And that is a fact. Let me snap, snap, snap. Did, did I read that well enough for everybody to understand? Okay. All right, so. Let's snap to that. F- from there, she actually breaks it down in a clip, and we're going to play the clip. And this is from Black as Fuck, episode three. Let's get into it. Society sees black girls as older than their age. That it's not just a problem, it's an epidemic. That this idea has been around ever since slavery. How nothing is more convenient than creating a narrative that little black girls look and act older than their age to justify all the horrible shit this country has asked of us. And how now, 400 years later, there's finally a name for it, adultification. I then pointed out the countless studies done about adultification, like the one from Georgetown Law. 
which showed that 325 adults from different races and backgrounds all perceived black girls as being more mature, more sexual, and less in need of protection than white girls their age. And this perception affects every aspect of our lives, whether it's in school, where black girls are three times more likely to get disciplined than white girls. Or the healthcare system, where black women are two to six times more likely to die from complications of pregnancy than white women. And black infants die twice as often as their white counterparts. And we're sure as hell less protected than white girls from predators. If all that's not bad enough, we've got social media to thank for making it even easier for the messed up way the world looks at us to just flourish. And since black girls as young as five years old are subject to this crap, adultification means that little black girls like Izzy don't get to have a childhood. What the fuck is up with that? So I thought I I thought I uh what, what the fuck is up with that? What's your thoughts? So I think that um she definitely has a point, but it was another It's another it's another clip that I'm a, um I'm gonna play. And her her sister had something to say, and this is kind of like the opposite side of what she's breaking down in the identification and she has points as well. So I'm gonna play this. I'm gonna play this. Can you not encourage that, please? Dancing? Oh, so I shouldn't encourage my little sister to express herself joyfully to music? I mean, come on, you act like you've never danced with your friends before. I do dance with my friends, but I don't put it out there for everybody to see. Mom, Izzy's just posting like any other kid her age and everyone twerks. It's like our version of the twist or whatever you did growing up. This is about adultification. There's a really insightful article that I read. Oh my God. Have you been talking to Drea? Don't let her spin you out like this. Look, I, I can't just ignore this, Chloe. I want my girls to know that sexuality isn't their only currency, you know? I mean, isn't the whole point of feminism? Drea was actually saying no, that Drea she is not a feminist, she's a bully. She's out here telling women how to act and dress and think. She's like the Taliban, but less fun. I mean, we gotta let Izzy get her life. This is the moment for girls to do whatever they want. Yeah, sure. Unfortunately, that does not apply to black girls. I know that, Mom. And it's exactly why she has to do everything her white friends are doing. My baby. I just want to protect her. Okay, this is the culture now, Mom. You should be proud of her, not slut-shaming her. Are you saying she's a slut? Oh my god, my baby girl's a slut. Dre is right. I'm a total failure. My daughter is a slut. And it's my fault. Dude, being a slut isn't a bad thing. It is bad bitch season and you have to get with the times. Instagram models make more than neurosurgeons. And strippers are the shit. God, I hope Chloe's not stripping. Come on, mom. Are you telling me you've never had your bad bitch moment? Um, um, uh, not that I, not that I can recall, no. If you want to be a good mom, you're going to let Izzy dance with her friends like a normal 13 year old girl. And I promise you, if you go up there and give some weirdo speech about adultification, you're just gonna make things way worse. And she's not gonna wanna talk to you about anything. All right, so that's basically both sides of that. And um, so now we have our opinion. Shade, what you was thinking? Oh. So, uh, wow. Um, like again, great, great, great points of views. There's gonna be a lot of controversy behind this because there's so many ways to look at this. So the first, I want to start at the first point. So the first point is adultification and how black little girls have been suffering from this from the time we are about six and up, okay? Um, so here's the thing. Um, I really get frustrated ex as well as a mom for having a 10-year-old who's a millennial 10-year-old, excuse me, generation, what are, we, Z, what are they, Z, X? There's X, right? Z. So they're Generation Z of this generation. So we're millennials. They're actually Generation Z. And the thing is, my daughter is very much with her time. Like, she's very good on the internet. She's very sociable. Uh, she's very much, you know, a TikTok star, you know, one of, a little legend, if you want to call it. You know, I had girls coming up to me flabbergasted for me and my daughter sometimes because she is one of those, those girls 
per se. Now, what that doesn't mean is she doesn't get good grades, that she's not a, a in tune with God and hasn't been in private schools and doesn't have this personality that you would ideally want in your little child. And I think they get somehow crossed in, like if they're this, they can't be this. What I will say is we are in a generation of a different time. And um, I remember when I was younger and I was 11 and I remember dancing to the thong song like vividly, right? I don't think it's no different. We all had, we was all singing peaches and cream. Like we was all listening to these songs and I'm, and I remember uh, me and my cousins would make up dances all the time. And I'm specifically to the thong song. I remember this. Cause I mean, I'm, I'm like 11 and I'm like, let me see that thong. And I got my little granny panties and I'm pulling them up. You know what I'm saying? But the difference was we didn't have social media at this time. So this is nothing that every girl I can promise you hasn't been doing since the ages of time. Like that's what those, these songs, nasty songs and sexual songs been around forever. Like we're not going to take that out. And like, because now they're listening to city girls and hot girl Meg and all these things. Now they're acting like, Oh my God, they're too grown. What our parents been playing these songs around us. They didn't have no discretion. If they liked the song, we was listening to them shit, but we didn't have social media. So now in a time that we have social media and kids can now post this, we are in a very problematic area. Now, what I will say, um, my daughter, you know, was on an extensive dance team. And to be honest, some of their dances included like fake twerking, but not twerking. And I remember like, you know, like having my eyes like, you know what I mean? Whatever, whatever. But it is a part of the culture. As much as people don't want to hear that and believe that, it is a part of the culture. Now, will I tell my daughter to ever be online? She not on a dance team. They not in no recital, but she just up there doing her thing. Hell no. My daughter actually, I've seen, you know, I check my daughter's phone all the time. I've seen some little 14-year-old girls. They do be on the gram twerking, okay? Not mine. No offense. I just, it's other fears that I have outside of it being a part of the culture. Just having, you know, predatorial, you know, just people just it's, it's other people I'm not worried about my daughter I know what she means well I know she's not her intention is not like let me shake my ass for the, some niggas that's not it like and I think that people got to stop trying to put that on them that's so they're just in their time like it's the same time but other situations and other people is who I fear all that to say is I heavily agree with the term yes little black girls outside of just being you know, adult, outside of adultification being a thing, uh, sexualizing black girls has been a thing just from the time we've been young. Like if they're thicker or they're a little too cute, it's like, Ooh, like, you know, when you get older, you're going to be a problem. Like, or, you know, I've had guys say these things when I was just like eight, like, Oh, you cute. Like when you like, you know what I'm saying? Like family friends, like it's not the kids. It's not the kids. It's the adults. It's the adults. That's making it problematic it's the predators that are making it problematic so do I think that people should be relaying it to kids like you're being grown or you shouldn't be doing this no I think the serious conversation needs to be had of how to properly expose yourself and you know wanting to always carry yourself in a higher light there's things we all do behind closed doors not like we're doing anything wrong but everything don't need to be put out there everything don't need to be said everything doesn't need to be shown you know we all live our lives like that like i said before like i don't smoke weed on the gram but i smoke weed it's not because i think it's a bad thing it's more so because i think it's 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 just something i don't need it's something i do in my leisure i don't need people in my business like you know what i mean and that's the same thing i would tell any young girl like i'm not telling you not to dance with your friends i'm not telling you when you having a good time with your friends and yeah but y'all don't need to be posting it in that way because unfortunately it's not what you guys were worried about it's the people we're worried about so i think that um when everything <clears throat> everything is okay until you post it so i feel like when you post it that's when adultification and because they say it's a stereotype that that grown-ups have on children because we look at well in a black culture we look at these children in, in our black culture and think that they are older than what they are because of what because of what we see now if we don't see it then i'm assuming that we wouldn't assume we wouldn't think that they're older than what they are in that light or in that manner because we don't see them doing things that's going to sexualize themselves so when we're talking about over sexualizing women or even men we talk about over sexualizing people is only we only doing that we only having a perception of because of what we see so like if you're going to put these things out there because i'm all for uh sexual liberation as well like i'm for both but at the same time we got to understand that 
for every action is a counter or <clears throat> is a counter reaction. You get what I'm saying? So and it's like, okay, if you want to put yourself out there and you want to be, uh, I don't know, you want to represent Hoa's life or whatever the case may be, and if this is what you want to do, that's okay. And I don't, I don't mind that you want to do that. However, I don't have to accept it in my home, or I don't have to want to be a part of it. Now I can, I can accept it and and not be judgmental and and still not agree like i can still like i can i can see something and not agree with it and still understand why that makes me is that makes sense now i think in 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 our country or just our world period i feel like people don't allow those two to coexist, coexist because like once i speak and say i don't like it now the person that that's like an insult to the person who does it. it's like well you shouldn't have you should not like it it's what i do with my body like okay that's fine and you can do that don't just because i'm saying that i don't like it don't mean you gotta stop doing it whichever you can do whatever you want however i don't want to be a part of it and i wouldn't date something like that and I, or not something like i mean it's like that but i wouldn't date a woman like that because that's just what it is so it's like and when it comes to my daughter whatever can i wouldn't want my daughter to do that however do i understand that in today's culture yeah they dance but that's for dance and that's for from this is my opinion that's for dance practice you know what i'm saying that's just mm -hmm. me it, and if it ain't in dance practice then i know i don't want to see it on a on a on a gram just mm -hmm. like you somebody don't want to be want to see be seen smoking on the gram or whatever whatever their pro, pro, prerogative for, for not wanting to be seen on the ground for doing what they want to do that's up to them but we got to understand that we got to accept both sides if if you want to do it, you want to be pro it, okay, cool. But if people don't agree with it and people have their thoughts from it, that should be okay as well. But we actually got two people on the phone. Oh, and I yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So in terms of just also kids getting into the second part, you know, like when she's like, you know, if she wants to be a slut, you know, do you've been in bad bitch season and, uh, you know, Instagram models making, you know, this over, you know, this profession, this thing. This is what I will say. For my young child, no offense, I'm like just as much as I want to tell my daughter to be, I don't know, a firefighter or a police officer. I don't think personally that I like once you know your kid, these aren't things like I would, you know, like if she wants this, like, huh. But like as far as Instagram model and things like that, the thing is, I think people get caught up too because they hear Instagram model and they get some people, some, there's classy ass, cute ass Instagram models that's not ass out either like you know what i'm saying so and i also think that instagram model thing like going viral or getting high numbers that's not always from one thing like you know what i mean so like for example my daughter had twenty thousand dollars on tiktoks just from her dance team as you know by itself like that's one way it would go viral now and she's like mom like i have to dress like this and have to do whatever i'm not going to be the one to promote that me personally no shade i have friends that do it and things like that but i'm talking to my child as a mother you know what i mean there's so many avenues you can do so i kind of agree with the mother when it's almost like i mean i don't want her to get so consumed in what her body has to offer that she forgets what her mental has to offer you know what i mean my daughter's a creative she could draw like shit. she's a painter she has so many great qualities she's a great dancer she's all these things like you can showcase your talent in numerous ways before it even leads to that now not knocking the females that that landed on you know some females have all different like i got a friend who does fitness products. She shows her body because she shows what her, her fitness does. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I have friends who accidentally fell into the lane of Instagram models. Now she's just modeling clothes and she has a cute body, but it doesn't always mean Instagram model this. And I also think that's also a secondary stream of income. That's something you do in your leisure. As far as a profession, I don't give a fuck if my daughter had a million, two million followers from being a cute girl who can dress and a fashionista. You better have your own business woman. You better have your own things to fall on because that's not going to cut it for me in this household. You get what I mean? So when it comes to children getting older, especially little girls getting older, of course they're looking up to these new found age Instagram models or oh, they're making money. I can, but I would never pitch that as one source of it. No, we're not doing that. So, so just playing devil's advocate, like <clears throat> even if like what I'm, what I would say is like, cause you was like, you wouldn't say to be a police officer or a firefighter, no, I don't. but it's like, if she was to say that she wants to do, it's different from pitching it and yeah. accepting it. Because yeah. like, we all say, that's what I'm saying. Plans devil's advocate. We all say that yeah. we want to accept our children for what they're doing. And it's people a lot of times, like people who, who go to the league, football, or basketball, they've been doing this since young. Yeah. So if you found something that you really like as young, why couldn't that be 
Um, your first avenue of or your first stream of income why couldn't that be your your first so profession this, this is what i'll say you're gonna have to pitch me very well the same way you're gonna tell me why you want to be a firefighter and a police officer i need to know your why to me an instagram model i think that's more of an income-based thing it's no it's not a lot of substance to it unless you have a metrics to it right so my daughter's not gonna get up like oh well i like clothes so i want to get on instagram and get free clothes and no well why don't you make your own clothes why don't you you know, find find your niche to why you're even displaying it. What is your why? I need to know your why. The same thing is the reason why I would need to know your why. Why do you want to be a firefighter? It's to save lives. What about saving lives that way makes it measurable for you? Like, I need to know your why. Right. Because to me, it's not just about I want to just do this. I need to know your why is because your why. And that's something I think has to be taught. I need to know what's your passion. I don't think I know. And to correct me if I'm wrong, and I'll ask the callers in, I don't think I've ever, again, every Instagram model I know, they fell into that by accident. I don't know one of them who woke up and was like, you know what? I want to be an Instagram model. I've never seen that. I've seen a picture did very, very well, and they was like, you know what? I'm going to keep going that lane so my pictures can keep doing very well, and it built up. I've never known one to wake up and say, I want to be an Instagram model with any substance behind it. Never heard it. All right, so we're going to get to the calls. We got uh, JS1, the supplier on, and we got diamond on as well uh diamond js1 y'all there yeah i'm here all right so we talking about uh over sexual over sexualizing the african-american woman in the let's say the country in the united states versus yeah. sexual liberation uh so first of all i just want right to uh ask we're gonna go ladies first what's your opinion on this topic diamond um i think that i have like I would say I have like a broad opinion on this topic only because I've seen it on both sides. Um, I'm, I'm a curvy person, like I'm a curvy woman, so I've been over sexualized for a really large part of my life. I'm 28, so I've seen it all the way as early as 14, like because I was also I'm also tall, so I also appeared as if I was older compared to my counterparts when I was coming up in school and everything like that. So I heard, you know, a point made about, you know, it's it's the predators. It's the people out there that basically put the sexualization on the child. It's not the child. And I completely agree with that. My issue, though, um, is that when that is said and because it's true, you have to take into accountability that that's coming from somewhere. It's conditioning because these grown people were children at one point. So if this is happening, you know, and this is continuing to happen over the course of so many years, it's historically been conditioned like colorism, like, you know, even amongst our own culture, you know, it has to be something that has been ingrained in the minds of a child so when they grow older they still feel that way even when you think about it as as young as i remember being young and my dad taking me to get my nails done when i was little something as simple as my dad taking me to get my nails done turned into a brawl between my parents because the color on my fingernails was red my dad didn't think anything of it because he's like, what? This is a little girl. This is my little girl. What does red have to do with anything? Right. <laughs> but because my mom had been a victim of sexualization and being around predators that could have been, you know, in family members or people that were exterior from family, she felt it was 100% offensive and was setting me up for, you know, advances from predators. Mm. But that had nothing to do with me. You get what I'm saying? Right. And that can actually rub off on the child to make them even feel um, inferior in a lot of cases. Even growing up and you say, okay, well, I'm going to put this skirt on my child and then I'm going to put this skirt on another child that might be, you know, non-African-American or non, um, you know, black. The girl with the short skirt is going, she's pulling up the Catholic school right now, absolutely fine with her high socks and nobody's saying anything <laughs> to her. But the black girl with the same skirt is being looked at like you being fast, you got that little skirt on, you trying to get male attention. Did the little girl think that way in her mind? No. She's thinking, I just got on the skirt, I'm being regular, why am I being targeted? Because it's been ingrained in, you know, African-Americans' minds since the beginning because we were never looked at as 
people, we were looked at as objects. So our physicality always reigned first. Yeah. So we never really got an opportunity to be people or to be evaluated in mental or emotional development, just in capabilities. Yeah. Oh, when she's old enough, she's going to be childbearing age. Okay, we can sell her for this much. Or when she's old yeah. enough, she'll be strong enough to wash dishes and wash clothes. So then she'll be, you know, physically fit to do this. But when you're looking at it that way, that's a very poisonous way to look at anyone yep. because white girls don't go through this. Yep. Yep. If we move a certain way, it's like you gyrate in your body, yep. okay? And my family is Southern. <laughs> they from Virginia. Yep. So, you know, it's like you gyrate in your body. When you put your hands on your hips, you think you're grown right. or right. Uh, you got on lip gloss. It's too much lip gloss. Right. You're sending the wrong signal. Like, right. what? What are we thinking about? Right. It's Vaseline on my lips. Because they chopped. Why am I worried about some yeah. man looking at me getting sexual arousal mm-hmm. from that? That's ridiculous. You get what I'm saying? It's it's an adult problem because it's been ingrained in adults' minds that little black girls are Older more than. sexually mm-hmm. attractive than little white girls. Mm-hmm. And that's something that you have to look at. Yes. Because we took a lot of thought and a lot of thinking mm-hmm. from how white people thought about us. Yes. We didn't really have an opportunity yeah. to uh recondition how we felt about us as a people so it's us too it's black yes. people talk so, to him yes so, so I'll actually, i actually like jay it's us too unfortunately jay you there yeah, yeah. Me. so i wanted to actually get into uh another point but i'm gonna actually i'm gonna do you the, the same just as, as i as i did diamond before we get into us playing playing a part into over sexualizing African American women. What do you think about the the clip period? Like well, I want I really want people that's watching this to to think to remember that this is a show that is all not all satire, but has a it has a heavy hand of satire in it. Uh and it's based on the life And what of do you mean by writer. that though? Like, like you gotta I mean it's satire meaning that like it, it, it everything wasn't meant to be played straight, meaning that they're having a they're having a conversation and no, they're not laughing at each other. But there's a lot of, yo, this is tongue in cheek. Yo, get this, like the mom definitely ain't right, and the daughter is doing some shifty shit. So like, I'm not saying that everything they're saying is wrong, but there's there should be people should think about this from the perspective of yo, the mom has issues, the whole family has serious issues. And the the family that is having issues is trying to tackle a difficult subject. So everything I don't I don't I'm not, I'm not trying to say that the responses were wrong or what any individual person said in that clip is wrong or right. Only thing I'm trying to say is is that this is a very nuanced subject, and they're approaching it from a very non nuanced way. They kind of went in at bull in a china shop style, and like you know it was really for this for for us to have the conversation, but. From my perspective, <clears throat> I'm like, yo, I, I'm as a black man, a 40 year old black man. I was like, bro, I don't even want to touch half of this. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it's a lot hot. of this, I don't understand. Like, I, I really don't understand it. Why? Because I come from a time period where everything was way more black and white. You know what I'm saying? Children had to dress and stay in a children's place, a child's place. And adults were to do, you know, whatever adults were supposed to do. Meaning that the outfits had a certain look to them. Girls were dressed a certain way. You know, everything was, you know, and activities were conducted as such. Like children play with the children and children area and adults play with adults and adults area. And in our family, in my family, because I don't know about nobody else's, if there was somebody that was out of pocket, those people were not allowed to be around family functions. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, their names were not even really mentioned that much. And if that person were to come around and children were around, then they were dealt with accordingly. You know what I'm saying? It could have been an ass whooping. It could have been whatever. Even if they touched or didn't touch a child, it's because of the fact that there was protections in place. Facts. Now, outside of my family circle, I don't, re- I don't really know how other people handle stuff, but <clears throat> all of the young women in my family, which there are a lot of them, they were all asked not asked to, but they were put in certain, they were dresses a certain way. If they was to go to the store, a male had to accompany them. You know what I'm saying? None of my cousins, like when I'm out and about, even in the streets, like if my cousins is out in the streets, I got to make sure they good. Like that's my responsibility. So it was, it was a di- little bit different in my joint. So like in this clip with them doing the whole gyrate and stuff, like my mother would never allow that. Right. There wouldn't have been no, like in my mother, in my house, my mom would never have like asked my sister, yo, is it cool? Like, 
well, what if you doing wrong? My mother, first of all, would have been like, bro, I don't care what none of y'all are saying. Like, all of this is wrong. I see it. If I feel like it's wrong, it's wrong, and I'm shutting it all down, and I'm calling every chick's mother that's in this room, and we're going to have a discussion, and, and they're going to get in your ass, too. And that's just how, that's the word area I came from. So go ahead. Fact. So, I mean, I, I, think, I think it's crazy because I'm 28, I and I kind of came from the same the same era. Like, my mom's, you know what I'm saying? Like, if it's adults in the room, you have no business in here. You know what I'm saying? Stay in a child's place. Like, like ain't no joking with adults. You, like you might can ease one in every every now now and then, but for the most part, is stay in a child's place. But basically, what I so from there, I wanted to go into the conversation of, <clears throat> and this is the real topic of just plan plan into over sexualizing black women by women showing their skin on the gram, twerking on the gram. Now some people will be like, you know, this is the time for that. You know what I'm saying? We ain't talking about children now. We talking about adults, but. And reading adoptification, that plays a part in us sexualizing children, or even not even just children, se- over sexualizing black African women, period. You know, African American women, period. I wanted to see. Or, yeah, I really, yeah. That's what I wanted. Yeah. I wanted to ask, like, are, are you pro this diamond or you're against this diamond? Like, how do you feel? Do you think that, I mean, I'm grown, I should be able to do what I want on the gram, or do you think that it's, that's playing a part in it? What, what's, your, what's your opinion on it? My opinion on this is actually very interesting, and I'll share two pieces of information. So I'm newly married, and my husband is Muslim. And so my house, we we operate on Islam, right? So, you know, the whole basis of Islam is, you know, for women to be modest, to avoid certain um, advances from men. And so that's perfectly, you know, that's, that's perfectly intertwined in what we're talking about right now. But one conversation that me and my husband have had a couple of times is why do women have to censor or practice censorship to prevent males from practicing respect? So the, the thing about it is, is that you know, I've seen a lot of different things, even on Twitter, that say, you know, don't dangle me and expect, you know, not to, you know, have certain advances and different things like that. But I think that just goes to say that we raise our, our daughters and we just bring up our sons. We, we love our sons and we raise our daughters. We raise them to be uh, on point, be careful, make sure nobody's looking at you this way, make sure you don't do this when you do this, make sure you're not around these type of people, make sure you're dressing properly so that people don't expect to have certain things come from you, make sure your pants aren't too tight, make sure your, your skirt isn't too short, these different things, you know, make sure you wear a bra that goes perfectly with that, no panty lines, that might make people curious, different things like that, I think that that puts a lot of stuff on a female's plate as opposed to just telling the man, hey, just because you're attracted doesn't mean that this person, you know, lacks respect for themselves or just because you look at this woman in this type of way doesn't mean that you have the right to act on certain things. And I think that that goes, you know, that that's, that's super heavy because I hear a lot of males saying, well, you know, if women did this, we wouldn't do this. If, but if women did this, we wouldn't do this. And why does your behavior depend on what a woman does or does not do? So my question now, is, personally, my bad, not to cut you off. My question is, is so what stance do you, what side of the fence do you stand on and why? So I stand on the side that to each his or her own, I think a woman should be able to do whatever she wants to do. Now, will different consequences come with it because the world isn't probably like as liberal as we would like them to be. Sure. But I think that women should be able to do what they want to do, how they want to do it. Um, And I, I say that because if you take that, if you take that autonomy away from a woman and say, well, you can't do this or this is going to happen to you. You're basically shunning one side and allowing another side. There's no fairness in that. We're, then, we're, then we're just kind of practicing on what a male is comfortable with or a male is expected to do. And we're not really operating in, you know, what a woman would want to do. I think the whole, you know, history of America especially is just based off of what men see fit and what women will have to do because males see it fit that way. Okay, great point. And I think that that's unfortunate. Yeah. Jay, thank you for sharing. Now, Jay, what side of the fence do you stand on and why? Well, obviously, I'm going to be more conservative. Uh, I and, and I'm not from the perspective of 
I'm not. I don't. I don't want to speak from the perspective of the man. Men saying, "Yo, when you dress sexy, you make my dick hard." Like I, I'm not. I'm not really trying to come from that perspective. I'm coming from the perspective of in a society that has a lot of cultures in it. We need to establish cultural, a general cultural norm, so that everybody feels comfortable. Sight, like in all countries, it is not allowed for people to walk around. Well, unless you like in Africa somewhere, like you can't walk around with your titties out. You can't walk around with your balls swinging in the, in the free air. And that's and why is because there's just a social norm. There's certain social decencies. <clears throat> now, am I saying that women can't dress sexy? But I no, I feel like women should be able to dress you know to to suit their comfortability however there should be lines drawn for just general stuff like and it's not because guys won't be able to you know stop themselves that's not nah, but like yo that's just general levels of decency like i don't need like if i'm out if i take if i'm out hanging out with my mom in the mall and it's like 15 chicks out here and they got see-through tops on with no bra and nickels out everywhere my mother gonna be like yo what the hell is going on with these young girls like and I'm gonna be just feeling the same way, like bro, like put some, put something on. Like I feel like there's a there should be a line so that everybody can just be comfortable <laughs> versus it just being like, yo, we can do whatever we want and everybody just you know deal with it. It's like nah, it's the same way everybody got a problem with fat people. You don't want a fat dude walking around with no shirt on because then you got a problem with it. Like you know why you all here all out all over the place. The same way Lizzo puts on some lingerie and shakes her booty on her Instagram and then everybody in her comment section going crazy. But it's just like, bro, that's her Instagram page. She's doing what she want to do. But at the same time, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, you, you can't in, try to institute it in one area and then you want to be lax in a whole nother. You know what I mean? And that definitely goes for women. Like, not just for men, for women too. Women want to be like, yo, we can do whatever we want to do. But then y'all police the hell out of everybody else on some other stuff so it's like where do we draw the line like honestly okay well we I, mean, I, agree. I, um... I, I, I agree i agree with him to a certain uh, to a certain degree too because i always ask people like where where do we draw the line and i think that that's very important to ask because especially because the world is changing so rapidly and people are more vocal about their preferences and what they like and what they're going to do and what they're not going to do i think it's important to ask where do we draw the line I just think that, you know, nudity shouldn't be, one, nudity shouldn't be such an uncomfortable thing since we all naked at the end of the day. I do think that. I want to, I, I want to. Are you naked yes. right now? That's My... the important question we need to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, no, so... no, no, I'm not naked right now. Exactly. I wish I was. All right, so, I, just so... Gave, I just gave birth, so. I want to, I want to, I want to. I do understand. I want to end it on that one. I want to say thanks for calling. We got to finish the show. And I think we want to, we want to continue course. it on a podcast of where do we draw the line? And I like that. And I want to say thank y'all for, uh, for tuning in. Of course. And definitely uh, mm -hmm. keep your ears open for episode 24. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. No problem. Have a good day. So where do we draw the line? That was, I think that was a great, like, so where, where do you think we draw the line? Is it a line to be drawn or is it just like, fuck it, you, whatever you feel type thing? Um, I mean, we're talking about what we're doing when we're walking outside. Yeah. But what I, what I was, what about Instagram? Cause I, I mean, that's, like, but that's, still, that's not outside, but it's not I outside, think, but think, it's still public. Okay. So I think that social norm, of course, outside, a lot of people aren't walking a lot of ways. We're not walking out naked. We're not walking out certain ways. I think even when, I think how even women show up on Instagram, they don't always show up outside. I don't even think they show up at the club that way. I think a lot of them actually show up on Instagram that way. And that's their portfolio. That's where they're putting what they would deem themselves as art. But on the actual street, I don't really see Instagram. But if you're not going like to do on that Instagram. out on the street, is it fair to do it on Instagram? But if your Instagram is your portfolio, does it matter? I mean, okay. All right, I guess so. We can... that, that's what that's where I'm. You know what I mean? So I get what you know. I I get what Jay's saying. I get both sides like completely. But the like that's where I like you know got lost in the question because are we talking about what people are doing on social media? Or are we talking about what they're doing in the public? Because if we're talking about what they're doing in the public, I don't really ever see girls od wilding. Like oh, I be seeing girls. I, I mean, I be seeing like, girls wilding with the shirts with no. You, I mean, at the club. I mean, do you just? 
at I, festivals at, at uh, okay, so, concerts. Okay. But when we're talking about festivals and concerts, that's also another expression of self. That's where they go to but that's do that. The at, public, though. At the, but that's but okay. And also, how many to a, to a day? The amount of concerts they're going to like. If I'm going to a concert, so for example, Coachella. Girls do that whole thing for Coachella, but that's what Coachella is built for. Now, if we're talking about Amigos concert, they're going to dress like they're going to the club. Like, but how many times is that happening? Slim to none. So we're talking about everyday life, regular life. I don't see women just out here ODing. I'm sure there are some. I'm not saying there are absolutely none. But I think the question is more so, what are you putting out on social media? Because that's where people are spending the majority of their times these days, even when they're not outside. And is that, that's, are you asking where do you cross a line on there or in the public? Because I think people know they can't walk out in certain establishments and just boobs and a piece of tape over their boob. They know that. But if you're wearing they it on that. social media, that, that then gives a little girl the idea right. or so are we talking about social media or are we talking, we're talking that's about question. both though that's i'm talking question. in the public so if you're doing it on social media and a little girl follows you and she and your and your page is public and you have a little girl that that looks up to you and she looks Clearly. at you and you see and they see you on Understood. instagram then she thinks that she can go Understood. outside and so i'm just trying to get the actual question both. That's all, both. okay so one in public in the public you know what i'm saying like again like where i do agree with js uh, js1 is you know, there's things that children do and there's things that ki- grown-ups do. I express the same thing to my daughter. There's things that I can do that you just cannot do. You're 10 years old, you'll be 11 this year, I'm about to be 30. We're, we're in two different lanes. You have a time where you'll be able to make your own decisions when you wanna do that, but for now, no. Um, so I, I absolutely agree with that. Can you, can you completely knock out what they see no it's the same thing in the public you can't knock out what they see if we're outside it's a hot summer day and it's a girl that decides to wear her uh, some booty shorts and a and a top that's showing her under boob and her cheek my daughter gonna see it she's not blind but that conversation in our household is she's grown you cannot do that okay now if we're talking on social media i think it's the same conversation they're grown and also monitoring what your child is looking at and making sure like no like I, t- I go through my daughter's instagram all the day like this no block her because you're not that's not what we're doing second of all no that's not what we're doing she's grown you don't need to be following or looking at those things because you're not of age it's no different than watching a mature movie and a rated r movie there's certain things you just cannot display or choose to shoot but to choose to do so that's we, why i said it went from you said i know there you were focusing on um adult adult wise not kids you said leaving out the kids just adult right mm-hmm. so that question in terms of how women carry themselves on social media should that be affecting the male perspective is that the question because i'm a little confused on the question i mean the question is uh, basically what side of the fence do you stand on okay. over sexualizing women or just uh what was the word we use um sexual liberation so that i'm asking which side of the fence do you stand on and i'm saying that i think that <clears throat> i'm more on a on on the fence of when women do this, they play in they play into over sexualizing African American women. So like when you're on Instagram, if your Instagram page is public, even if it's not, I feel like you're playing into that because why wow, you have people looking at your page. And although you can say you're grown, you can do what you want, and you can say that you check you check uh your child's phone and you tell your child not to follow this person, but at the end of the day, they're gonna follow who they wanna follow when you're not around. When you're not around, we don't know what what they're watching, you don't know what what they're participating in, we don't know what I'm is get off this podcast. I'm sorry, yo, I'm getting irritated. <laughs> like I just don't feel like that's the same energy you gave that conversation. I feel like these are two different conversations. That's why I'm confused. So there, I feel like, uh, there, I felt like y'all were just talking about, you know, men versus women doing what they want to do and men viewing it depending on how they want to do it. Now we're talking about Your what side. my child sees and what, so which, that's where I keep no, getting I just confused. No, I what side of the fence are you on? I'm saying why right, I'm not But on. you didn't, I'm just confused of the conversation. I'm just literally nerves, asking like, what side of the fence do you stand on? What? On what? With my on, child or with no, just like, this? Like you keep adults, going back and forth. No, I I'm know. not. I'm saying adults. So I'm saying that I don't think adults should be doing this because children is influenced by it. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so in that, so this is okay. Before I pick my side of the fence, okay, so since you've been younger, you've been watching Little Kim, would, you've been watching all these sexual Foxy Browns, you've been watching uh, all these things, right? Did it change who you were as an adult? Did it change how I viewed women? Yes, and I was going to actually get. I've been, in- I've been watching these things since that. It never changed how I seen it. 
my mom ain't monitor shit. But you know, the way I monitored my daughter, my mom ain't monitor the damn thing what I did. Like right. I could watch what the fuck I wanted to watch. I could turn my own TV. I ain't had like even with no phone and I could go find my mom was at work seven is three and then seven to eleven seven eleven or seven to seven the next morning. I could do what the fuck I want. Did it change the type of woman I was? No. It didn't change it didn't make me want to go do it. So that's what I'm saying. Like when we're talking about it in a kid's terms of them wanting to do, I think a kid going to be who you instilled them to be or who God designs them to be. It doesn't matter if they see or they don't. Cause I've seen it all mm -hmm. growing up. I actually seen tons more growing up. I've been seeing sex since I was this high. I've been seeing everything I've seen. I've seen everything. I've known everything from a very young age. It didn't change the type of woman I am. I'm still heavy on my spirituality. I'm still chasing the same mission I'm chasing and I'm not out here doing that. So I don't really think that's the question. I, I that that's where I'm confused on what are like to challenge it. Like, you know, your daughter might see that like, okay like i didn't turn out no way like you know what i'm saying god willing she ain't either you get what i'm saying so in going into the question of do i think that women shouldn't do it for the appeasement of because men you know going back to what diamond said of men not getting you know feeling no way or like oh well because you did this or guys saying oh women because they did this that's why we do this or because y'all act like that that's not oh yeah i'm absolutely on that side i don't think what a woman does should dictate any man self-control i think no, a man yeah. should be able to self-control himself regardless of what they see on the gram. So that's why I said to me, it gets confusing and the conversations are two different ones because that was that and that's that. But me, I'm on the side of, of course, I'm not doing it, but do I knock any woman who does it? Absolutely not. Do I, I you know, I do I think that it's a problem how women care? No, absolutely not. Like I said, I got friends who do, I got, it don't make me no, never mind. Like I said, agreeing with Diamond 100% to each his own. Whatever they want to do is what they want to do. To me, it really has to do with if it's going to be sexualization. That's why I said it's on the other person. Me, me doing what I'm doing because you're sexualizing me out of your own perception or whatever you deem and whatever twisted things that's going on in your mind. That's showing. That's you. You nasty. Get your mind out of that. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, well, you got Sade's viewpoint on it. I got my viewpoint on it. We can move on to the next. Topic Jada Pinkett says that she realized that she doesn't know Will Smith at all. That's what she said during the episode of the Red Table Talk. And so we're basically going into how like discovering new things about your partner during this quarantine. So mm -hmm. basically, what I was gonna ask you, like, have you discovered anything new from me during this quarantine? And what was it? Or um new I wouldn't say new directly. Um, so I think the segment is just, you know, more like it's, 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 I think it's the statement is small, but it could go really big because, and what I mean by that is I just feel like, you know, the quarantine just really makes you kind of have to pay attention to every little thing on all relationships. Um, and you're spending a lot of time getting to know even more about yourself. And if you are quarantined with a partner, you are getting to know more about them. Um, so I think it's something we're all un not used to in a way because life is normally very busy and we're normally like working or, you know, fr we got to balance work and friends and parenting and self grooming and then we want to do this fun and we want to go out and then we want to do a vacation or we want to do this or work is kind of time consuming so many things going on nobody really had to really sit and pay attention to all the small things or like all the things that you probably would never see because like you, there was no time to see so with that being said is um it's not that like for me i wouldn't say like i don't know jay at all um but i will say like you know I get to see him fully just as much as he get, gets to see me fully. So, and I think that can either, it could do two things. It can really, it can really heighten your acceptance or heighten your differences. Like, you know what I mean? And I think that I'm kind of in the middle um, cause I'm getting like my fair share of things, more things that I need to accept. And I'm sure the vice versa on Jay. And then I'm also seeing the differences that we probably always had that are just like, heightened now because like we're stuck in them and you have no choice but to face these things every single day like you have to face them or you have to practice dealing with yourself on how you react or how you deal with them or how you go about things um so I don't think it's more so a measure of not knowing um but that's a good way to put it to get the people to see what you're trying to say like I don't know you at all but I don't think it's the measure of not knowing it's just 
now kind of knowing too much. So I don't, I actually don't think is a good way of saying like, I, of, I don't think it's a good way of getting the people to understand what you're saying because like to say you don't know somebody at all, I just think, I don't want to say it's, full, it's bullshit, but it's like, damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I didn't hear the clip and I wish I would've heard the clip. I just read it. So I'm pretty sure it's two different, you can get two different perspectives from reading it and listening to it. Me reading it, it's like, wait, what? That's not really true. Even like when I was reading, um, when I was listening to church today, he was like, you know, never say somebody doesn't ever do anything. You know what I'm saying? So to say you don't know me at all, like, come on, that's not true. I, I don't think it's true. You know what I'm saying? And what what I thought about it is I think I'm very big on like friendships and getting to know somebody before you go into a relationship with them. And I believe that this just shows that because if, if people were friends before this quarantine thing, I think they would still be friends after quarantine. Like if you knew who you were getting yourself, if getting involved with, then this quarantine wouldn't be a thing. Honestly, I like I really feel like this time can be time for good and betterment and time to like really grow with your partner. And 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 this time can be like it can be like I think Alex was saying on the phone that he him and his father was talking and he's gotten like that became like his best friend almost sort of kind of. And I feel like it can do the same with relationships. Granted, it's not the, t it's not the same type of relationship, but for me, before I even had seen this clip, before I even read anything about this, I was like, yo, like this should be a time where relationships grow and just be more happy with each other and be more and be stronger. And, and like, this should be the time that be lit for real, because coming out of this, it should be like, yo, we weathered the storm. Like, yeah, we was in, we was in, in the house and that while everybody's complaining, we was fucking playing games. We was kicking it up, kicking it and having fun. And I just feel like it's kind of doing the opposite because a lot of people didn't, they was, they really didn't prepare to get in a relationship with who they are in a relationship with. But a lot of times people didn't really get to take the time to know the other person. And now that you don't know the person, now when you got to sit in the house with them, you, now you have no choice but to get the person, get to know the person that you ain't know. And that's, and it's like, you got to look at yourself in the mirror for that. And like, for me to answer my question, like, <clears throat> I don't think that I don't know you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like you're the same person that I decided to be in a relationship with. And I feel like e even in like in our instance, instance, we talk about how like we, we kind of rushed into it or whatever the case may be. But once we rushed into it, we got to know each other. Well, from my perspective, I got to know you and I saw things that I loved. I saw things that I might didn't like, you know what I'm saying? And I chose to accept those things. Some are easier than others. Some are harder than others, of course. But I, for the most part, not even for the most, just being honest, like during this quarantine, I don't think nothing has changed or nothing has made me look uh, uh, no other type of way, but it's just like, it's just, like honestly, I've been saying this, like I think it's just, it's the same, you know what I'm saying? I decided, I know who I was going to get my, I knew who I was getting myself into with, with and I accepted that and then we just got to move on for it. So for the quarantine, I don't think it really changed anything. I think that it just really made niggas stick in the house. What I will say is that, what I will say is though, I think the dynamic, dynamic does change because of our work schedule. And if your work schedule change, you have to be, you gotta be um, fair, have grace, and you gotta be empathetic. You know what I'm saying? Like if somebody work schedule change, like Shadi says that like she don't have time, she like she doesn't catch the train and be able to have these conversations. So on my part, if I think it's the same for me, I have to be more empathetic that she might get more irritated. You know what I'm saying? Because she don't have those, that, that regular everyday schedule routine matters. Her being able to talk to somebody on a train or go to work, that matters. And for me to really understand and be like, yo, you know what? She might be more irritated today. I can't look at that and be like, you know, um, I don't fuck with this or I'm starting to get to know this part of you that I don't fuck with. Nah, I gotta have grace and I gotta be empathetic about it. And that's what I think about that situation. That's the first thing that came to mind when I, when, I, when I read it. Like, damn, you don't know nothing about you? Come on, right. So, I, like, you know, just to go into, you know, feed off you know, what you said and things like, I don't think she meant that literal. Like, I mean, she's been married to this man for a, two decades now. Like, I don't think she meant that in a li over literal term. But that's why I said to me, I, I like I personally can get what she's trying to say as overall just trying to get the people to understand. That's my personal opinion. Um, but I also think, though, too, like, you know, like, you know, like even like to shine on when you're like, um, you know, you know, people are supposed to be friends and, you know, these things before, you know, and all these things. 
I also think that, again, like I said this in the last podcast or the one before that, like people grow and they change daily. And because people grow and they change daily, it's certain things that go with those changes and what they now would like or would now want to see. And I think that that's a lot of what's also being done too. Like I think that through the quarantine, it is helping people like tap into different things or channel their inner emotions and get to know themselves and what they really like. It's not even just to a relationship degree. I think personally for people, if you didn't know yourself before, you're getting to know yourself now. Thanks. Okay? So a lot of people got into relationships not even fully knowing themselves. So therefore, and, and not even know, fully, know, fully knowing, you know, what they like, uh, not always pleasing other things, not always having a slave to a job, not always having to get up and go do everything else. Now they're just sitting there like, what do I like? Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what do I... What do I want to do? Like, what, what 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 am I passionate about? Like, what it really gets my the fire up under my ass? Like, and when people start to pay attention to these things, sometimes you're when you when you are with a partner, it can look different now because it's like, damn, I didn't even know this by myself. So now I can see where this benefits or this does not benefit. And I think both sides of that is okay because it's not just about like, oh, we supposed to like in order to get things better, you have to find where the things are not fix to fix them to get them better so when you look into things that you need to fix this is how they get it better so when you said like you know this is the time we're supposed to be having fun and you know like or playing games or everybody else complaining i think it's a, everybody's growing individually and in relationships through this process because you have no choice but to face everything you've been avoiding for so long like not even avoiding that you didn't get to see for so long because some people haven't been avoiding it life is just going on when life is normal is this happening this happening this bill do this bill do mom sick this that dad gotta go to the hospital this gotta go to the, now i'm sick now i gotta go to the hospital now i gotta make an eye doctor appointment now i gotta go get a checkup now i gotta go to work now i gotta go it's always something like it's always something now when it's not as much things going on because everything's closed you can't go get these checkups you can't go do these things now it's like okay well what else do i have to do Oh, okay, well, like I can be in my head and I can organize my thoughts and I can place things where they need to do instead of compartmentalizing, I can find compartments for them now. And now I can figure out where it goes where. So now I can see what I really mesh with. Now I can see where my energy does go up and down at. Now I can really put into myself the, the time that I never had. And the thing about having a partner is when you have a partner, now you gotta do you and you gotta do them. So like how they say like cars get a car fax, I seen something was like, now you got to do a soul fax. Now you got to pull your soul report and fill everything that doesn't make sense or everything that got a light on and check the engine and check this and check this, that, that. And I think that's really what it has to do with. I don't really think it's just about, you know, her not knowing Will or them not working out. I don't even think she didn't even say it in that light. But I think it's more so about now I'm pulling my car fax, I'm pulling us as a union Carfax, I'm pulling my mother Carfax, I'm pulling my daughter Carfax, and I'm seeing where all these little things are that I need to get in order or get it fixed or that, you know, I might need to adjust or I might really like or this part. And I think this, you got to take the good with the bag, like the yin and the yang. So that's just uh, ideally what I think. And just some advice to go into that. Um, I just think that, you know, patience, like, you know, what I've been doing is like, I've had a lot of grace and patience on myself and on my relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like Jay said, there's the fair things, the good things that, you know, we, we like that we take in when we have a relationship and there's a fair things, the good things, uh, bad things that you, you know, you may not like that you take in the relationship, but the whole thing to me is giving it grace, especially in this time, especially if you're quarantined together because grace and faith and time gives a relationship a chance to flourish. Um, I don't take, you know, what I've been learning to do is anything that I'm trying to figure out or I'm not unsure about, I just stop reacting to them because it's like, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know why this, you know, this miscommunication has happened or we're not on the same page as this or we, you know what I'm saying? Everything, everything you want, like everybody, like everything you want, that's good as good. Like you don't really have to dress good because good is good. Like, and every, like you could, you only could be, gr show gratitude for it and be thankful for it. So those are the things you wake up and say, you know, I'm thankful for this. But the things that I'm still trying to figure out, like I give myself grace in a lot of time because it's not like, who am I to rush it? And who am I to try to make something out of, make nothing out of something, like, or make something out of nothing? Like, it doesn't make sense. So you give it time, you give it grace, and you allow yourself to 
grow and flourish from that point. Nothing has to be rushed. Like even if things open up tomorrow, now we know we need to take this time regardless whether we in action or not. Like whether it's Sunday or Saturday, we need to take these car faxes, like a soul fax, like we take a car fax when we about to buy a new car and take a soul fax on ourselves and on our partners and on our friendships and on our motherhood and our whatever and things like that, you know? Um, and just like even like, to dawn into that it's not just about relationships you know like i had to pull my mother daughter car facts you know what i'm saying y'all hear me talk about my mother daughter and i said you know regardless like what do i can do to be a better mo- daughter what can i do to be a better you know all these things so i think that's definitely just you know it's just some soul work on every end that just needs to be done that's no, how i look I into think it. that was uh that was a great advice uh move you want to talk about I guess we could save it because we already down the line. So we could just go ahead and jump into this. What's the Wait, list of what I? Why you ain't going to you? Because I feel like I don't know. I feel like we're already at an hour, so we might wanna. No, go on to you. I could save it for it. No, go all ahead. right. So uh, all that to say, so from there I was going to go into sexual chemistry, post and pre sex talks. So, you know, I've had um, a couple conversations with a couple ladies. And then I also just been reading up some just things, just a thing. And um, I realized that a lot of people get into relationships um, in a way where they like this person, they like your swag, they like, you know what you come with, they like, you, they kind of pick apart your attributes, right? Then you may have sex and then the sex might be bomb. So it's like, all right, this could work. Cause I like your, I like your attributes you got, the sex is bomb, we could work this out, right? But nobody ever has the conversation like, what do you like? Or what do you not like? Or do you like when I do this? Or do you like when I do that? Or like, you know, what does pre-sex look like? Like, what do you, do you like pre-sex? Do, or do you not like pre-sex? Like, do you like, uh, like foreplay? Foreplay? Do you not like foreplay? Do you need foreplay to even start up that engine? Like, what do you need? Uh, post-sex talks. Some people need the post-sex validation after to feel like, liberated like oh you liked it you didn't like it if you don't say especially because if you don't know their background they might need to hear it they might not want to hear it but the point is nobody's having that sexual chemistry talk like what's your sexual chemistry like can i fill in this blank can you fill in that blank like do you like you know what i mean so all that to say i thought it was just a good conversation to have since you know we get into these conversations on the conversations that people don't talk about what does that look like what do you think? Uh, so I was about to look look up the definition of chemistry, but I forgot that like it's actually like it's science. Yeah, it's science. It's so really science. When I think but that's of, how it works. Yeah. So when but when I think of chemistry, I think of something that comes or that's built. So like chemistry, people will say we have chemistry on the show. People will say, oh y'all have chemistry when y'all out together. So I believe that it's something that you learn and you can have the conversation about it. Um, how or it could just come naturally. However, I think a lot of times what happens is people don't have these conversations until it's something that they don't like Mm -hmm. instead of having the conversation. And I mean, it's something that I really, I don't want to say I can't talk about, but I don't know because I never had that. I mean, I've asked people like, what do you like? What should I do? And I, I thought we even had the conversation and um, right like on people a, like what are we I'm talking so, about? Like, I ask people. Yo a, said I asked people what they like. Nah, like I'm saying I'm as, confused, honey. Period. I ask you people. what I've asked you what you like and oh, I don't know. <laughs> so I think that I don't know. I think it's something that depending on what you like because I don't need to be asked. However. If somebody asked me, shit, like it wouldn't feel, it probably wouldn't feel bad. But then again, is are are people, men and women, are they okay with hearing the truth? Are you okay with hearing what somebody really like and what they don't like? Because a lot of times you try to spare people feelings and you don't say these things. Yeah, facts. To to spare hurt. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, that I, conversation can go. I don't know. I guess I guess what I'm getting at is how to properly introduce this into being a part of that dating stage because it's not about what anybody hasn't done already but making it a normal to talk about at the beginning of the sexual phase of we're dating now we're having sex like before we're into that because i think it can save a lot of those trips down that people not feeling like 
they can say this or whatever because if in the beginning nobody really give a fuck that much like we care but we don't care like you know what i'm saying we we give a fuck but we don't give a fuck like you know what i'm saying it's like well you ain't like it you know what i'm saying i low-key could still call the bitch that i was fucking two three weeks ago so period like you know what i'm saying so i think it's definitely just to how to introduce the normalcy of having the sexual chemistry talk so how does, how does that conversation look um mm-hmm. i think okay so what i think is the first time so like obviously you know when you're first time having sex it's normally probably built up and y'all like each other and it's like i fuck with him i fuck with her kind of how you know what I'm saying like we about to get into this you're probably the first time y'all have sex y'all not gonna have a conversation i almost can guarantee that because it's already built up like you know shorty been digging me in, he been feeling me i'm feeling him cute i'm cute Let's get this shit popping. You've been playing like, you know what I'm saying? I'm knock this bitch down, right? After that and you see what that looks like, I think it's okay. And I usually think this can happen in post-talk. And I think, I, you know, I read something. I'm sorry that I didn't keep the reference of how important post-talk is. And um, I think it's actually more important to females than male. Like, I think men just kind of like, yeah, 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 she sleep. I did what she she sleep, she balled up. I know I did my thing, but sometimes it's not always the case. You just said sometimes females, you know, once they release, they just tired. So period. So I think post talk, especially for you, would have to let me know how males viewed or like what you think because I can't speak from a male view. I'm a, I'm a female, but I know that females do love post talks. Like yeah, babe, that shit was good. Like that shit, you know what I'm saying? And before we had this conversation where it was like, well, what do you if you don't like something, you wanna Tell them what you like. And I think that is the opportunity of like, you know, you know, I can't wait because next time, you know what I'm saying, you da 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 da, that shit gonna be crazy. Then all you do is psychologically, the film is like, oh yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, I might do that. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I definitely think post talk is important because just as much as men need validation, like in a way of just like, you know, moans and like just feedback and just what if females need the same thing, especially if you have men that don't do that in the bedroom so a lot of men don't there's men who do it but then there's men who don't talk during sex they don't have that emotional like experience it's just like and the girls is doing all the things correct me if i'm wrong but i'm you know what i'm saying so but females you know are always expected i guess to moan and uh, move and a uh, feel and a uh, face or expressions and you know all these things i think the perfect opportunity to talk to your partner is post-sex because the sex was good hopefully i don't know what y'all got going on but hopefully the sex was good and now y'all can go into like oh i like that you know or i like what you would do if you did this like, so now you can get to know somebody's so how would the chemistry conversa- how would it go like if you could role play it out how, how would- all right boom so after sex you know cuddle 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 because it was bomb you know what i'm saying then it's like you know from you know ideally i guess men would be like this is so <laughs> Alex, fuck out of here. Um, I guess ideally men It's you so know, complicated I think, with women, right? No, it's, it's so it's complicated. Not compl- Monique, you like post talk, right? Like, I'm not tripping. Like I I'm talking to women. This is just what the women told me to say. I That's why we said it's so complicated. This is just woman. what the women wanted me to say. You know what so I'm saying? I'm just here advocating for the women. This is also what I also can agree to. You know what I'm saying? You know, if a man, you know, I think women, again, because we're nurturers, we do things that should like, we'll cut up on you. You put your, put our head up on your chest and rub your chest. Like that was good. Like, you know, so put our legs, I, I, men just later like, yeah, yeah, shit was, yeah. So how does but the conversation think, go? So I think if men were to say things like, you know, that was good. I like that, but that shit was, yeah it will open up for women to also be like, nah, you know what I'm saying? Woo, woo, woo. And I think that women also have to not be afraid to be like, you know, cause like, I ain't gonna like, you know what I'm saying? Cause you talk, this ain't Jay. Like, you know what I'm saying? Some men eat the box hard. I'm sorry. Like it doesn't feel good. You know what I'm saying? I'm just speaking for the ladies. Ladies ask me to talk and I'm going to talk. You know what I'm saying? Um, I got you, Monique. You know what I'm saying? Ladies ask me some men don't really eat the box right. Some men do it too hard. Some men don't know how to touch. Like so every woman is different. Every woman don't want to be rough. Everybody. Some women need a little more daintiness. Some women need a little more extra. Like you know what I'm saying. But I think that will open up a door for both sides to just be like you know you know 
touch me soft or like you know what I'm saying. So you saying this yeah. starts basically what I'm hearing is this starts by a man saying no, that not was, that, not not necessarily. So how does the conversation go? Well, it to me it varies per person, but like for me it would go different because like so how would it go for you? For me, like I would just like you know I tell you all the time, I, like babe, like be gentle with me. Right, like so if I, think, I was gentle, I'm saying I'm trying to when you say the conversation, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how, the, like, if you can role play the conversation. So I can't role play my personal experience, but what I will say, I think that post post sex is a great time to have the conversation. I can give advisement on where to have the conversation. My personal opinion would be on our sex life, and I don't think like I can role play that out because it's just like we've been dating, like not dating, we've been together for two years, like you know what I'm saying, like. It's not new. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. Like, for somebody who's getting into a relationship, I'm suggesting that post-sex, after y'all first time have sex, y'all better talk about it. Talk about it. Okay. Talk about it. That's what I'm saying. Like, to <clears throat> role-play my personal experience with my boyfriend from two years, it's not going to be the same. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? It's not going to be the same. Like Make, Makes sense. Yeah. So, what I advise, you know what I'm saying? Because the, the ladies asked me to talk. Let's talk about the sex. Ladies, don't be scared to talk about the sex. Because, you know what I'm saying? You got to let a nigga know. Some niggas don't know. Some niggas don't know. You're going to have to tell them. And that's a great time for it to, yeah, just have bomb sex. you like, babe, you know what I'm saying? I liked when you did this. You know, next time if you just do this, bam. Niggas, babe, I like when you do this. Next time if you just do that. Now, if it's something y'all both just like, mm, I ain't doing that shit, well... <laughs> This is the first sex day, so now you're not. Don't do it. So okay, makes sense. Period. Have the have the conversation. That I think the conversation time. is important, and I'm gonna tell you why it's important too. I think the com the conversation is important too because I think a lot of times later down the road, uh, niggas start, not niggas. I'm talking about both sides. Like you know what I'm saying. Start couples start getting content, like, and then you know the sex is what it is and you've been and then later when you're like oh, i always just wanted this you can't say it now why can't you well you can say it now but i'm saying it's harder, it's harder to have yeah, the conversation course. is what i'm trying to say it's not that you can't say it now it's harder to have the conversation um especially you know i just had a conversation with one of my friends and i felt so bad because she just was like you know telling me about you know their sexual experience in the time and the first thing i asked her i was like well why didn't you been say something how do you have the conversation no i'm not talking about us i'm talking about you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm I didn't even, like I didn't even. No, I, I just didn't want like, him to have. I just didn't want him to have no ideas. You know, a lot I was going to ask. Like, I like mean, a I lot of people confide in me. You know what I'm saying? I give them a lot of advice on what I think. You know what I mean? So hold on, I would let you know, and y'all already know. I would let Jay know right would on you this let podcast. Me know? Great, I sure will. I tell you all the time. Stop being so fucking rough. There's something I hate that Jay does. Jay slobs on my fucking cheek all the fucking time and he loves it and I fucking hate it. I tell him no matter what and he still <laughs> does it. He comes and he's like. I mean, and I fucking hate saliva, and it be all over my fucking face, and I always gotta go like this and wipe it on him because I fucking hate it. He knows I hate it. You already know. If I don't like something, I'ma tell you. Like I fucking hate spit unless it's on my. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, I don't fucking like spit on my face, on my neck, wet in your ear. That's fucking disgusting. Don't put it on me. Like, period. Like, I don't. Like, Jay knows. I fucking hate that. And I tell him. So don't sit here and be like, would you tell me? Absolutely. All right. So moving on, man. Like my parents. And I did not want to hear all of this information. Yeah. Let's, oh let's move on. He asked for it, so. <laughs> you, 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 you got it, babe. Go ahead. Okay. Boom. So... Um, I got some questions of my ex Jay, but also what we're gonna do is this motherfucking fruit roll up challenge. I will say that Jay that's beats me. Jay beats me in a lot of sports. Okay, he beats me in a lot of sports. So I'm banking on him. Not you. You don't gotta open them for you. You can just toss them over. Yeah. I I, um, he beats this me game in a. Is gay. I'm lose on purpose because no, you're not about to lose. I don't want to win it. <laughs> it's not us, no, because Jay keep looking at it like you're slurping. First of all, you can't slurp a fruit roll up. You have to chew, and if you could eat the box, then you could chew. All right, bet. So, then I'm gonna win then. All right, but okay, Say so less. you know, so you got unroll it all the way, all the yeah, way. Yeah, unroll it all the way. I'm on win, but I'm kind of lit. She ain't drink her all her drinks, so I'm lit too. I'm fucking yeah, sweating over here. Fuck you ain't even me. look. Still got you mind you, both that. both them on her. The, of first of all, one was juice, so he was fucking yeah, thirsty. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, but both of them... He was fucking thirsty. All right, whatever, so... So leave I'll this leave, leave this loop, though, because... So take the paper off? Make, yeah, take the paper off. Leave this loop. So, you know what I'm saying? Jay usually beats me in a lot of sports, so leave the loop, because we don't want to go touch the floor, because <clears> Corona. All right, so, so... 
All right, so somebody count us to three. Wait, why you take yours all the way out? What you mean? You said take it out? I said don't take out the loop because it's going to make it too long. So put the loop right here? Yeah, leave the loop. All right, put it on your tongue and Monique going to count us down. There was never no rules to this. <laughs> hey, I'm done. <laughs> there was never no rules. You cheated. No, bro. No. That's no. typical Jay. He cheats in every game, son. Like, that was not how you play. You never said that. You never said don't Jay, touch like. Why, why the fuck would you, you do that? You gotta be clear in your rules. No, you've seen the game before. Like, why would you do that? I have no idea what you're talking about. Go ahead, go Redo. Ahead. Pass two more. Bye. <laughs> right, you cheated. Like, you fucked it up. I did. I was smoking his ass. I know y'all seen me. All right, get to the game count. Let's go to the game. Fuck it. Come on, get two more. No, but we ain't gonna sit on the camera, so. All right, well, I but it. I think it's actually harder sitting down, so I'm cool. Like, mm. like yo, just whole cheated. Like I don't understand. Uh, yo, don't fucking cheat, bro. I ain't gonna lie, you. You can have this shit. You won. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he don't want to play. No, 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 yeah, you, yeah, uh, yeah, I told her. I mean, I'm glad. Like, that's good. Like, that's, that's what's up, man. I ain't gonna lie, I think my lips is dry or something, because that's just, that's just what I'm coming what? up. Like, yeah. I'm like, one, <laughs> that one shit more wasn't time. Coming, that shit wasn't coming up. All right, come on. One more time. Kyle Fan. One, two, three. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. Um. <laughs> I ain't about to be on camera gagging and shit. I ain't about to have me looking like that. The fuck is going on, man? You won, man. The fuck is up, man? Like, you got it. Uh -uh. What the fuck is going on with this? Good game. Good shit. Come on. You won. You won. You won. You the winner. All right, boom. I felt myself. No. Game over. Like, anyway, over. all right, boom. So, damn, it's on. So, how do you answer a call after a fight with me? What's up? Ring, ding. What's good? That's how you answer. Yeah. What's up? That's it. Yeah. You're so boring. Okay, would you break up with me if I decided to get an OnlyFans? <laughs> um. Okay. Are you? You ain't get enough. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Damn. Um. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Would I break up with you? Jeez, I don't know. It depends what the only fans about. It could be about your feet, your, your hands. All right, so overall, hair. I could get one. Just can't be like the only fans, only fans. Yeah. I gotta be your manager though. My manager? What the fuck? What if it has nothing to do with you? I just want my own only fans, and you're not allowed to have a subscription. Oh uh, man, we'll see when that when that, when we cross that path. Um, if you had a chance to be on one of these teams. Would it be Jay Z with Rihanna and Kanye? Jay Z with Rihanna and Kanye. Or Lil Wayne with Nick Nick <laughs> Nick Kanye. Nick. <laughs> First word that describes me in ten seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A nurturer. A nurturer. A nurturer. <laughs> Best pickup line you got. 
<laughs> ain't, ain't no pickup line. What's up? How you feeling? Jay, so boring. I'm not. I'm dead ass. That's my pickup line. Boo. That's my. What's good? How you? you know I like your coat. I had this fur coat on. I remember. I like your coat. I don't even remember he, that but, shit. He, but he took it and he like wrapped it. He thought he was cute. That wasn't even no pickup line. Yes, you did. Oh, so what was that? Oh, you tell everybody you like their coat, huh? No. You tell everybody you like their hair. Or you like something, huh? Oh, I like your shoes. Nah, you that's one of all... those. I like your hair, sweetheart. Now nah, you know you, you know, know how niggas be a hey, red hair. I like your hair, sweetheart. Now nah, you you know you know what I what I do? That's... I ask I ask what you do, what you like to do. Or like You ain't never. You what just, you do? That's what you ask other people? How can I support you? No, that's what he asks everybody though. You know, Jay been trying to build a team forever. So <laughs> how can I support? Nigga been trying to ask everybody. Anyway, period. Go to your next one. All right. So if you were your own boyfriend for a week, for, let's say five days. For five days. Yeah. How would this week go? If I was my own boyfriend. Yeah. Let me know. We'll Waking start up. Start with some breakfast and bread, bed, and some breakfast with head. Some breakfast in bed. Here you go, bed. Nice tray with a little flour and a little candle, a little breakfast, and you let me eat. eat and you come take it, and you get under the covers. And you... <laughs> so that's, you know what I'm saying? Then, you know what I'm saying? We could, you know, just one thing a day, because this is a lot. How would the day, like, how would your week go? Like My week go. So I had some breakfast in bed. Then Tuesday, we could actually do our own. Taco Tuesday, where we make different tacos together, shrimp, steak, salmon, chicken tacos, and we do it together and make some margaritas. You know what I'm saying? We have a little vibe. Wednesday is hump day. So then, you know what I'm so saying? So we won't have sex on Monday or Tuesday? Yeah, but yeah. The fuck after you give me hey, you know, what the fuck going on? Okay, so Wednesday, Wednesday is hump day. Yeah, so Wednesday is hump day. So, you know what I'm saying? I would love like a slow dance in the living room, like a little couple candles, put a little tune on. Cause, like, come on, babe, come dance with me. You know what I'm saying? These are all warm ups to get the box. Like, if you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, what the fuck you mean? You talking about, so we not fucking on Monday and Tuesday? Yes, because once you do this, it's like spread. So, Thursday is uh, Thickum Thursday. It's like, I'm just making up shit now. So, Thursday, you know, I would love a walk. You know what I'm saying? We could get a little drink, kind of how we did this week. You know what I'm saying? I love that. Go on a walk and drink and just talk, preferably by some water. Friday, because you said five days. Friday is, you know, we could do a little date night. You know what I'm saying? Have a little dinner. You know what I'm saying? We could still, I'll cook dinner, but you would just have to do everything else. Like, you got to, you know, get a little bath together, a little candle, put a little flower in the bath, nice smelling bubble bath. And yeah. So this would be every day. You said Monday through Friday. No, I'm saying so. so would this be every day until y'all? Until what? I don't know. Y'all get married and y'all y'all done. Y'all pass. Oh away. no, but you know, a full five days of it just would be nice. So one, you know, one five day a month. Oh my god. Mm, okay. All right. Cool. Oh my god. What we at? What one week a month. Take back once a month. <laughs> once right. a month, yo. Once a you month. You got five days a week nah, for just one one week out the month. Facts. All right. So what? Hey, what we at with the time, man? I think that's a wrap, man. I guess we only had to. Yeah, we only got to go into the the uh, the other. The what? All right. Yeah. Shout out to Meg Thee Stallion. Shout out to Megan Beyonce. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We love your fucking song because Beyonce slayed per usual, period. I love the fucking Houston hotties both getting up together, talking a shit. You know, I love how one, Meg is young, Beyonce's teaming up with the young ones, but I love that Beyonce is still showing y'all bitches like I'm still that, still very much young, I actually still think... very much nasty, still very much of a savage because her mommy name is Tina. Uh, I was today years old or whenever the fuck the song sons dropped when I learned what demon time was. Oh, I had oh, never Wait, heard. I still don't know. What, what's demon time? She said on her demon time, she can make her own thing. Oh, yeah. But what's demon time? I mean, it's just demon like time. savage. It's like, you were savage. savage. Yeah. Like, I, I had never heard it before. Yeah, me either. I think she just made that up. So, oh, wait. Okay. so She didn't make demon time up. No. Drake just dropped a whole song. Okay, so what's demon time? Like, it's just you're it. savage. Like, you could do it like... Yeah, like, I'm on my demon time. I'm on my Mine Saturday. Gotta make me a... Oh, yeah. Everybody got demon time. What now. I will say is, shout out to the... Uh, first of all, let's start from the beginning to the end. Shout out to Megan Thee Stallion for one, linking up with Beyonce. Second of all... Manifestation queen, because she been called it a long time ago. One of her Instagram... One of her Instagrams. Interview. Interviews. Shout out to Nala Simone yeah. for doing that interview. 
Uh, she actually from the DMV. Shout out to Nala. Uh, shout out to Megan Thee Stallion for also doing a whole new song, like a real remix. Like I hate when people have the the same exact song and it just add a verse. Like I hate that shit. Shout out to her for doing a whole new verse. She body. Megan ain't playing with y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Megan is not gonna play with y'all, and she's nowhere near done. And I love it. Yeah, shout out Been to Meg for a long shout time out to Beyonce for coming through. Snow. Shout out to Jay Z and Dream for coming through. I'm sorry, but I mean, you gotta give respect. Niggas love to do that, but yet when I was arguing Cardi, so what? So what? So no, I, I didn't, I'm saying so what too. But I'm mm-hmm. saying shout out to everybody. Shout out to the whole team. Like mm-hmm. shout out to Jay Z for even you know what I'm everybody saying like being riders. okay with it. Everybody got writers, writers on their songs. So we when y'all shout out albums, y'all not like shout out. <clears throat> Let them like you. Know what I'm I saying? mean, Get them either way, she killed rock. it, so it don't matter. Yep. Like it because ain't really it's in the flow and the swag. It ain't in nah, the she words. Bodied it. Yeah. Period. I I will say. Good luck, mother. You yeah. got something else to listen. Yeah, to. Yeah, man. So episode twenty four, Gemini Scorpio podcast, J Hill, Hilla Bay. You said it so dry. Say my name with some um. Hilla Bay is in the fucking building. We out. Twenty five minutes. It's a wrap. It's over. It's Peace. done.